This is a legend unlike any other. This is the exciting story of St. Helena, mother of the Emperor Constantine, who found the cross of Christ in Jerusalem. Let us begin with some history. In AD 70, there was an insurrection from Jews and Christians. Because of this, the Roman Emperor Hadrian abolished the name of Judea and renamed the area Syria-Palestina. To eradicate the influence of Christianity, Hadrian leveled the top of Mount Calvary and erected a temple to the goddess Venus. He also cut away and leveled the hillside where Jesus' tomb stood and built a temple to the pagan god Venus. Now let us learn the amazing events that led to the conversion of Helena and the rise to power of her son. The historian Procopius reports that Constantine named a city in Bithynia, Asia Minor, Helenopolis to honor her birthplace, which implies, but not with certainty, that she was born there. That location is now in Turkey. We are also not sure of her exact date of birth. Historian Eusebius of Caesarea writes that she was 80 years old on her return from Palestine. And since that journey is understood to have occurred in 326 to 328, she was probably born around 250 AD. It all started when Helena was a young servant girl, her full name being Flavia Julia Helena. She was no different from anyone else until the day she caught the eye of the Roman Emperor Constantius Chlorus with her beauty. She married Constantius Chlorus, who would later become co-regent of the western part of the Roman Empire. Her first and only son, Constantine, was born in Nisus in Upper Moesia in the year 274. In a few months, Constantius was raised in his ranks and was obliged to divorce or set aside Helena in order to marry Maximian's daughter, Theodora. Constantine was forever loyal to his dear mother, whom he loved very much. He grew up and soon became part of the royal circle, but he never left Helena's side. As Constantius was dying in 306, he proclaimed his son by Helena, Constantine, as his successor. Constantine took control of Rome as he rose in power. He won many battles and he expanded his reign over the years. In the year 312, Constantine was in combat with Maxentius for the throne of the Roman Empire. With many of his soldiers killed, his side was losing the battle. Constantine prayed to the Lord God of the Christians to help him in his battle. In answer to his prayer, a sign appeared in the sky. A luminous cross was seen with the words in Latin, in hoc signo vinces, which meant, by this sign, you will conquer inscribed on it. The next day, Constantine won a decisive battle over Maxentius. He became a Christian that day. Helena, too, embraced Christianity following her son's victory over Maxentius. In the following year, he legalized Christianity with the Edict of Milan. The Edict of Milan allowed for Christianity to be a freely practiced religion. Helena was granted the title of Augusta by her son, a Roman imperial honorific title given to empresses and honored women of the imperial families. Constantine ordered all to honor his mother. He even had coins minted bearing her image. With her title of Augusta, Helena was now given free reign over the imperial treasury. She became a devout servant of God and her influence helped Christianity spread throughout the empire. She had great concern for the poor, financially assisting both individuals and entire communities. In 326 to 328, Helena undertook a trip 
to the holy places in Palestine. On this pilgrimage, it was said that Helena followed in the footsteps of Jesus by performing many acts of kindness and good works, such as giving money, food, and clothing to the poor, and also helping churches with funds as well as other needs. During her journey, Helena had many churches constructed, including the one at the site of Jesus Christ's birth, the Church of the Nativity, Bethlehem, and another at the site of his ascension, the Church of Eleona on the Mount of Olives. After weeks of traveling, she finally made it to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was still being rebuilt following the destruction caused by Emperor Hadrian. Hadrian had a temple built over the site of Jesus' death. This temple was believed to be dedicated to Venus. Helena had this temple destroyed and chose a site in this location to be excavated. This exposed the site where Christ was crucified. There are several versions of the story on how the cross is found. In some, Helena has a dream telling her where the cross is buried. In another tradition, the Ethiopian Coptic tradition still celebrated as Mescal, she follows smoke from a bonfire to the site. They start excavating, and finally, they uncovered three crosses. One was thought to belong to Jesus Christ, and the others belonging to the two thieves that died alongside him. To test and see which one of these crosses truly belonged to Jesus Christ, they brought a leper. The leper was instructed to touch each of the crosses one by one. He touched the first one and nothing happened. He touched the second one and still nothing happened. Finally, when he touched the third and final cross, the leper was instantly healed. It was this cross that healed the leper and for that reason, it is known as the true cross. The cross was then carried back to Constantinople, while part of the cross was placed in the hands of the Bishop of Jerusalem. Helena had one placed in Constantine's helmet and another in the bridle of his horse. As the years passed, fragments of the true cross were placed in the care of many churches around the world for all to admire. Some stories further claim that Helena also found the nails of the crucifixion and that the nail's miraculous power were used to aid her son. St. Helena died around 3.30 with her dearly devoted son by her side. She was then buried in the mausoleum of Helena outside of Rome. St. Helena was renowned for helping not only individuals but entire communities through her works of charity. She is often sought out to help the poor and destitute. She was a very devout servant of God, so much so that one would easily believe her to have been a follower of Jesus Christ from birth. Through her influence and work, Christianity continued to spread throughout the known world. Holy and blessed Saint Helena, with the anguish and devotion with which you sought the cross of Christ, I plead that you give me God's grace to suffer in patience the labors of this life, so that through them and through your intercession and protection, I will be able to seek and carry the cross which God has placed upon me, so that I can serve him in this life and enjoy his glory ever after. Amen. Hello, everyone. As 2020 comes to an end, let me take this opportunity to thank each and every one of our viewers for your support. The pandemic during this year caused many of our dear ones to suffer. The faith is shrinking, yielding to chaos and distrust. Our children are the ones to suffer the most. As we begin to see the silver lining, the world needs more of faith, hope, and love. 
We at Christian Kids TV are trying our best to spread this message. We are so excited to tell you that we are making a new show for our young viewers. We believe that by spreading God's Word, they will be inspired and embrace our Lord's everlasting love. Our team is working very hard to create this show, which we believe is our calling. This mission requires and needs support from good people like you. You can support us by making a small donation using the links in the description below. You can also support us on patreon.com slash christiankidstv. We hope you will see value in what you learn from our videos. We are meanwhile building a bouquet of subscriber benefits too. And remember, your support doesn't always have to be through donations. You can support us in your prayers too. At Christian Kids TV, we thank you for all of your support. We could never have reached this far without your love. We wish you a very happy new year and may God's light guide your way in 2021.